He's coming in the day of judgment with good salah and good ibad. If ata rabbahu biqalb salim. He's gonna before he's gonna come before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with an enter, solid, strong, pious heart. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the chapter of Qaf, Illa man ata Allah biqalb salim. Not the salah, not the action. Because if that one will be corrected, as Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, everything will be fine. It's called Malikul Jawar, the king of all. Ala inna fil jasadi mudla. Indeed, in the body there is a, a peace. Ida salahat, salah al jasadu kullu. If it will be okay, the whole body will be okay. And if it will be corrupted, the whole body will be corrupted. Once you will know that Allah's promise is the truth, there is no doubt about the day that everyone is talking about. I'm going to be held accountable? Yes. I'm going to stand questionable? Yes. About what? Major, minor? As we'll see in the same chapter. That's why Nothing will be missed. والله العظيم nothing a word a blinking nothing will be missed in the book of Allah either minor or major once you will have in your mind that this place is not a, a wishy-washy is not a, a doubtful end it's there then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it the same way we have it in many places worldwide. Everyone in the city have started, oh man, now we have wali. See man, we have guys, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had made them sleeping for 309 years. And they did wake up and just see, now they passed away. Let's take them barakah. And others will say, no, it's haram, ya akhi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there. You should not have an association to associate others than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with them. And it has become an argument, the same way we have everywhere. إذ يتنازعون بينهم أمرهم بكب. Oh, what we should do? Do like what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala did, make it even for the prophets. Bury them in the same place and take their story, their life as a reminder. That's it. What else you wanna do? And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, as you will see, me كثير. Interpreting that verse, لعن الله اليهود والنصارى اتخذوا قبور أوليائهم مساجد. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala did curse the Jewish and the Christians because they have taken the graves, the graveyards of their prophets, as a mosque, as a masjid, as a prayer area, as a place they will go and not even prostrate to Allah in. They are prostrating to them. They are not raising their hands to Allah to ask for the request. They are asking them. Oh, the wali of Allah. And the wali is innocent. He has, the, the, the youth has never said that. إِذْ يَتَنَازَعُونَ بَيْنَهُمْ أَمْرَهُمْ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it in the Quran. قَالَ الَّذِينَ غَالَبُوا عَلَىٰ أَمْرِهِمْ Those who are, who have the upper hand. Those who have the power. They said, Go! Are you Salafi? What's wrong with you? What you are talking about? We'll have it. We'll have masajid on that. لَنَتَّخِذَنَّ عليهم مسجدا will make their graves as masjid and everyone should come and pray here to get the baraka from the, the seven youth whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did bless which is not the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which is not the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said you are gonna stop by any one of the graveyards of Muslims not others because I have seen brothers and sisters are making the same for every graveyard you have the graveyard of Diana, you have the graveyard of George and Marcus, and you are saying, Assalamu alaikum, Ahl al Yarim Mu'mineen. Assalamu alaikum, all the people of the, the houses of believers. Does it make sense? It's the graveyards of Muslims. Assalamu alaikum, Ahl al Yarim Mu'mineen. Peace be upon you. Those you are living. Because they are, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made it very clear. And that's a part of the unseen that we have been discussing from day one. Are they listening to us or not? Yes or no? 
Sure? Yes or no? Can you give salam to somebody who is not responding the salam? Does it make sense? That means they are listening or not? Are they replying? Huh? Yes. If they are not replying, why am I giving them salam? Yes. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, alayhi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When the Sahaba was talking to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was talking to the, to the shuhada, the martyrs in Uhud, and the martyrs in Badr, and even to the kuffar in Badr, telling them, have you seen what Allah has promised, the truth or not? And the Sahaba, Ya Rasulullah, are you talking to them? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Wallahi lahum ashaddit sama'an li minkum. They are listening to me more than you. They know exactly what I'm saying more than you. But they cannot, you cannot hear the reply. Walau udhina lahum fil rad. And if you are talking to the believers, and if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove the barriers, because there are barriers for everything. There are barriers for the eye. There are barriers for the ears. Is it correct? فَبَصَرُكَ الْيَوْمَ حَدِيدٌ Once you are gone from dunya, your sight is very strong. Barriers are getting different. The wavelength, let's make it with the signs. The wavelength that you are receiving with ears, you have a limit for the, in dunya. In the day of judgment or in the second life or even after death, some of those barriers are gone. It's a different criteria. Same for the eyes. You will see angels. You will see the angel of death. You will see souls. You will deal with angels in grave. The criteria is different. Allah is making those barriers in dunya so you can handle the life. If your, if your ear can handle what's faster than the sound and what's faster than the light, it doesn't work. That's the reason sometimes those who are going to try to do it or get close to their ears, they are losing their ears. That's correct? They cannot handle it. They're saying that just the drum is gone. Because Allah made it in a way that's suitable only for dunya. Allah knows exactly what he has created and he will have you suitable for the dunya that he has created. And he has created the dunya for you. Sun will stay in the place, in the orbit. Stars will do the same. But in the day of judgment, it's completely different. See, it's gonna stay stable and calm only to serve the human being. What's water for those who can, in science? Is it H2O? That's correct. Two particles of hydrogen plus one particle of oxygen. Is it correct? Is it true? Can you bring again, if I'm gonna give you two particles of hydrogen and one particle of oxygen, can you mix them up and bring water? You can, but it's gonna be water plus what? Explosion. It's gonna be water plus explosion. Try to bring, ask any one of the chemists. Two particles of hydrogen plus one particle of oxygen it's equal H2O, which is water, one particle of water, plus explosion. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا الْبِحَارُ فُجِّرَتْ It's there. Allah just made it count just to serve the life of the human being. But once Allah will say, the theory should not be there, because there is no life for the human being anymore. يَوْمَ تُبَدَّلُ الْأَرْضُ غَيْرَ الْأَرْضِ وَالسَّمَاوَاتِ وَبَرَزُ لِلَّهِ الْوَاحِدِ الْقَارِ Once Allah will start the major signs, وَإِذَا الْبِحَارُ فُجِّرَتْ It will come back to the origin. H2 plus O, one O, should be an explosion before being water. Allah is manipulating the whole universe to serve the human being. Who are keep or continue or insist on disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وكذلك أعثرنا عليهم ليعلموا أن وعد الله حق وأن الساعة ضريبة فيها إذ يتنازعون بينهم أمرهم فقالوا ابنوا عليهم بنيانا ربهم أعلم بهم قال الذين غلبوا على أمرهم لنتخذن عليهم مسجدا we'll make it as a masjid which is not what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is looking for what you have it's just get a reminder as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show us insha'Allah in other chapters 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the legacies of the, the righteous people, the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be as a reminder. You have in their stories, you have in their legacies, a reminder for those who are mindful, for those who are going to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لَنَتَّخِذَنَّ عَلَيْهِمْ مَجِّدًا وَاصْبِرْ نَفْسَكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَدَاتِ وَالْعَشِيِّ يُرِيدُونَ وَجَّهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is continuing his... سَيَقُولُونَ جَزَاكَ اللَّهُ كُلُّ سَيَقُولُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is getting back describing the same story سَيَقُولُونَ ثَلَاثَةٌ رَابِعُمْ كَلْبُهُمْ وَيَقُولُونَ خَمْسَةٌ سَادِسٌ كَلْبُهُمْ رَجْمًا بِالْغَيْبِ وَيَقُولُونَ سَبْعَةٌ وَثَامِنُهُمْ كَلْبُهُمْ فَرَبِّي أَعْلَمُ بِعِدَّتِهِمْ مَا يَعْلَمُهُمْ إِلَّا قَلِيلٌ فَلَا تُمَارِ فِيهِمْ إِلَّا مِرَاءً ظَاهِرًا وَلَا تَسْتَفْتِ فِيهِمْ مِنْهُمْ أَحَدًا The same way we remember from day one one of the major reasons behind the revelation was the discussion between the kuffar and the Jews and they came back to Muhammad with the question about about the youth and a question about the soul and a question about the man whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him the power and he owned the east and west, the Qarnayn. Now Muhammad is giving them the whole story. It's not only just to, to telling them about the, just a brief about the youth, the whole story. But that's the way of the Jews. Oh man, right now we can just, he's gonna, he's gonna defeat the whole idea we have been trying to, to come up with. Oh Muhammad. How many they are? What are their names? How they look like? It doesn't work. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the benefit is from the story. There is no benefit from the minor detail that has nothing to do with our faith. Some of the brothers and sisters are going into some details. Oh, uh, can the sun be like uh, blah, blah, blah? What, what is the benefit of? In our deen, even the question is a part of our ibadah. <coughs> we cannot ask anything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it very clear. Whatever Allah did not present it as a mercy of us, don't ask about. Because some of the stuff he cannot handle. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense. And during the time of Umar, one of the guys used to bring those kind of questions to make a to make the Sahaba confused, to make it an issue within the Sahaba, bringing those kind of questions that's dealing with mutashabihat. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it clear in the Quran, Allah has made those mutashabihat for a reason. وَالَّذِي أَنزَلَ عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابِ مِنْهُ آيَاتٌ مُحْكَمَاتٌ هُنَّ أُمُّ الْكِتَابِ Those are the verses that you need to ask about. The mother of the book. Verses that will take you to halal, haram, to a direction of your life. وَأُخَرُ مُتَشَابِهَاتٍ And others, Allah made it as a, a test for those believers who are going to believe in Allah's words and Allah's description blindly. Allah is saying, يَدُ اللَّهِ فَوْقَ أَيْدِيهِ The hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is on the top of their hands. Oh, how is Allah's hand? How Allah's hands look like. You cannot even make it. Whatever you might think of, Allah is completely different. It doesn't matter how far you can go. You have a barrier. You cannot even go beyond it. That the reason Allah says, to make it easy for you, Nothing is similar. It doesn't matter what you might think of. Because Allah has made <coughs> Allah has made the thought and the brain limited. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. But that's the way of the Jewish who used to come into those kind of subjects in every single aspect in their lives with their prophets. With Musa alayhi salam, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with him. As Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. رحم الله أخي موسى من الله جب the mercy to my brother موسى لقد أودي أكثر من هذا فصبر he has been hurt even more than me and he was patient they are gonna start talking oh three four why why you asking about question that will not give you a benefit 
that it will make your life even more confused. When Muhammad, the guy has come to the Prophet, Ya 